Hello and welcome today to Thursday's Mindset Learn Extra Live Matric Learners. I hope you guys have been doing well. I hope you had a good day at school. Today we're doing geography with Michelle. How are you doing, Michelle? Fine, thanks. And you, Lloyd? I'm good, thanks. Uh, so guys, before we start the show, as always, you can find all the notes for today's show on Facebook. It's facebook.com forward slash learn extra. All the notes will be on there as well as the schedule for this week's Learn Extra Live shows. You can also find the show at learn.mindset.co.za. And uh, as always, the Casio calculator up for grabs. Guys, all you have to do is answer that tr question on our Facebook page, and you could be walking away with a brand new Cas Casio calculator. And uh, today, the show is sponsored by Macmillan. Without any further ado, Michelle. Thank you very much, Lloyd. Welcome, learners. Um, just before I start, I've been requested to say a very big hello to all my grade 10 learners from 4A, so thank you guys for watching as well. On to what we need to be doing for today, grade 12s. We're going to be basically be dealing with agriculture and mining, which is basically the first part of your economic section of geography. So let's just have a quick look at the overview for today's lesson. So in today's lesson, we are going to discuss the importance of mining and agriculture in South Africa. We need to also examine the factors favoring and hindering mining and agriculture industry in South Africa. We also need to discuss the concept of food security. We also need to revise some important terms in the primary sector of South Africa's economy. Before we get there, however, if we show we do a challenge question, so let's have a look at that. Your challenge question for today is to explain how the homelands policy prevented any black farmers from contributing to South Africa's commercial farm production. So I want you guys to think about that and see if you can come up with the answer by the end of the show. Without further ado, let's move on to our summary. The first topic we're going to be looking at today is agriculture. And when we're looking at agriculture, we first need to look at why it's important. So the importance of agriculture to South Africa's economy. Now the first thing is that we produce raw materials for industry. Okay? Raw materials like maize, like wheat, to be sent to factories to create food products, etc. It also creates employment, and in that context, it provides both direct employment, so that's like your farmers that work on the farms, as well as indirect employment. There are hundreds of thousands of people that are linked to the agricultural industry as well, via shopping, food chains, truck drivers, you name it. The third importance of agriculture is the contribution to the economy, especially to our GDP. We export a lot of our products, okay? 55% of our products get exported and they earn us a lot of money. A concept that you guys really need to know, it comes up in a lot of papers, is the idea of a dual agricultural economy. So dual meaning twofold. Now the first part of that is that in our agricultural economy, we have small scale commercial farming and small scale subsistence farming. So the plots of land are small, the farming is often intensive. We also get large-scale commercial farming. When we're talking about small-scale commercial farming, their output value is very high and they produce things like fruit, flowers, chickens. Large-scale commercial farming is when they use very big tracts of land, lots of mechanization, and they basically deal with um, large local markets. Subsistence farming, just remember, that refers to people that farm for themselves and their families for consumption with very little profit. If we have a look at South Africa's main agricultural products, you will see that most of our products are specialized in a way. So poultry, for example, is one of our bigger products. Okay? We have a big fruit and vegetable section as well here. Maize is not as large a section as you think it would be, as well as wheat, because we import a lot of those things from other countries, because it's actually cheaper to import those from other countries. We specialize in chicken, in fruits and vegetables, all those sorts of things, because um, they have greater value and we can export them for higher prices. You don't need to know necessarily every single one of these in terms of their order, but it's useful to know that we basically produce a lot of specialized agricultural products. 
if we have a look at the factors today of agriculture, firstly, we need to have a look at factors that favor agriculture in South Africa. And there are lots of them, and this is possibly an essay question. So just remember, your essay question, you need to know at least four points for each of those essays. Now the first thing is we have a range of climates. So we have very warm, moist, wetter conditions in the northeast, especially in places like KwaZulu-Natal. And we have a mild or temperate southwest with winter rain. So this allows us to grow a wide variety of crops, um, everything from tobacco uh, to, to grapes to maize and wheat. So we really do have a wide variety. We also have very long growing seasons, okay, with lots of frost-free days so the conditions are not too cold and we need that for healthy crops. We also have very large areas or large expanses of flat land or gently uh, rolling hills or undulations and that flat land enables us to farm effectively without too much soil erosion for the most part. We also have very large river networks, the Orange River, the Tugela River, and we use that for irrigation. Even in our drier areas, we have what we call transfer schemes, water transfer schemes that link drainage basins and help to transport water to those drier areas. Another factor that favors agriculture is the idea of climate research. We have a wealth of climate researchers in the country that are constantly looking at the atmospheric conditions and predicting whether or not we're going to have a rainy season or not. So that prediction assists farmers in their growing of crops. We also have extensive plant research. We can create hybrids or use hybrid seeds that withstand drought. Okay, they can withstand very, very dry conditions for long times, and they also produce higher yields. In addition, they can also resist certain pests and diseases. So all those factors are very important to remember when we're talking about things that are pro-agriculture, that help agriculture. Right, factors that hinder or stop agriculture in South Africa? Firstly, only 7% of all the land in South Africa is arable. What do I mean by arable? Okay. Arable means that the land is fertile enough, the soil is fertile enough to grow a high enough yield of crops. When we say it's unarable, not arable, it means that the soil is dry, it's brittle, it doesn't have enough nutrients to support high yields of crops. So just remember the word arable. In addition to that, factors that also hinder or stop agriculture, we have insufficient rain, so not enough rain over half the country, especially the western half of the country is extremely dry. Um, the Northern Cape, for example, um, they don't get much rain in the year at all. We have unreliable rainfall. Okay, that's an interesting one. Unreliable rainfall means that um, there's great variability in the rainfall. So one year we might get um, high rainfall, up to 800 millimeters of rain, which is generally an average year for rainfall uh, for us. And then we might have El Nino conditions kicking in, and then we might get very low rainfall. So that variability in rainfall is high. And so we can't always rely on our rainfall without irrigation to produce those crops. We have a look at another factor that hinders or stops progress in our agriculture. In a lot of regions, we've got very poor soil quality with little humus in many regions. That word humus stands for organic matter, decaying matter, which helps to add nutrients and minerals back into the soil. And we need that for rich topsoil especially. In addition to that, we have a history of poor pa uh, farming practices. So poor farming practices could be things like monoculture. And monoculture means that you're growing the same crop in the same soil year after year. We need to rotate those crops. We don't use contour plowing, um, so we encourage soil erosion. Soil erosion as a result of poor farming practices is also prevalent throughout South Africa and also really hinders our progress there. Now, before I get to the next notes on mining, I just was asked to tell you guys and encourage you guys to play an online interactive game that helps you actually gain experiential knowledge in agriculture and water and drainage basin management. So if you have a look at the screen, 
we have a web address for you guys to go to. The actual game itself, South African Water Game Challenge 2014. And there's the address right there. So I encourage you guys to go and actually play that because then you're actually going to get experience in managing drainage basin systems. You're going to get experience in what are proper farming practices in South Africa and across the world. Okay? And it will help you to understand all the challenges we face in that game. It appears that they give you various challenges or community projects to get involved in. And through s completing a series of tasks, we can see that um, you're trying to sustainably uh, use our water reserves. So go and have that, uh, give that website a check out and go and play that game. On to our next notes. We need to have a look as well at the idea of food security, more the definition than anything else that gets tied into other things. So food security is a very important definition. It has come up in virtually every single paper I've seen. There are many definitions. One of them, the one that's in the focus textbook, people can afford safe and nutritious food for a healthy life. It could also refer to people having enough food to meet their daily needs um, in a balanced manner uh, for their whole family. If you have a look at this graph that I've added in, it's uh, quite scary in terms of food insecurity shown as a percentage on this graph. And if we have a look at data collected in 99, 2005, 2008, we can see quite high percentages in all our, in all our provinces that show how many people are living without enough access to food every single day of our, of our life. Eastern Cape, that's an extremely poor province, up to 80% in 1999 had food insecurity, so they actually didn't have enough food to meet their everyday needs. If we look at Gauteng, we're on the other end of the scale, being more developed, more urbanized, um, a slightly higher GDP in this region, if you will, only about 15% by the year 2008 did not have access to enough food to meet their daily requirements. So just remember that term food security. On to mining. All right. That's also another major primary economic activity in South Africa. Let's have a quick look at the importance to South Africa. First of all, because we have such a wide variety of minerals and they're very valuable like gold and platinum, we have a very large contribution of that to the GDP. Diamonds, platinum, extremely valuable minerals. This term here, multiplier effect, is an extremely important term for you guys. It comes up often, so get to know what it means. Here's the definition. It means that additional economic development happens in response to a new or expanding part of the economy. So other industries linked to mining also benefit from the wealth that mining generates or encourages other developments. Thirdly, the exports of processed and unprocessed minerals also add to our GDP. So we've, we actually manufacture things unprocessed or processed goods and we export the raw material unprocessed mineral products. A couple more factors to say why mining is important. Mines are also a large source of employment. There's a lot of mine workers. They work for low wages, but we have a large sector employed in mining. We also attract foreign investment. Foreign companies want to invest in our mines as well, so it's a good thing. It also helps to improve um, construction of infrastructure. So our road networks, our railway lines have had to improve because of our mines in order to transport these goods. The development of link industries is another important one. You guys need to know what link industries are. It means that the current industry that we're talking about, mining, supplies materials like or iron ore, for example, diamonds, or equipment to another industry. Okay? Or it could be dependent on another industry for materials and equipment. So they're dependent on one another to function effectively. The last reason as to why mining is important to our economy and to South Africa in general is the growth of local industries. Okay, there's a lot of link industries, a lot of local industries that develop because of it as well. Just be aware, possible essay questions as we're going through all these notes. Okay, 
We then need to look at factors that favor mining in South Africa. So factors favoring mining, okay? Firstly, we have huge reserves of minerals. For example, there's huge reserves of platinum in the Northwest province, okay? We have a rich geological history, we're very lucky, and we have a wide variety of minerals. So we have gold, we have diamonds, we have iron, we have uh, silver even, copper mines, okay? So we really do have a wide variety. The mineral seams, so the layers or the actual rock that contains those minerals are thick and they're continuous and often they vary near to the surface as well, which helps us to mine them easily and more effectively. The next term is also important. We have a low thermal gradient. Okay, Thermal meaning temperature, gradient meaning a change. All right. So what that means is that the temperature does not change or increase rapidly with depth because the further you go down into the Earth's crust, the hotter it gets. So what we're trying to say is it doesn't get too hot. Therefore, for the miners especially, the cost of cooling the air pumped into the mines is reduced. I should say is reduced. So the miners can work in relative comfort. In addition to that, Coal, large reserves of coal, especially in Pumalanga, KwaZulu-Natal, it's also available for cheaply uh, formed electricity. All right, and we use that especially for Gauteng, for all our secondary and tertiary activities. Also, there was an availability of low-paid labor. During the apartheid time, for example, um, a lot of workers flocked from the rural areas to urban areas where all the mines were in order to, to get work and to provide for their families. I think it's time for a break and we'll continue afterwards. Yes, it is, Michelle. Guys, remember, I hope you guys are taking notes, but you can also find the notes on our Facebook page. That's facebook.com forward slash learn extra. All the notes from today's show can be found on there, but we'll catch you guys after the break. Don't go away. Welcome back, Matric Geography Learners. We're here with Michelle. If you guys haven't caught us in the first half, um, we're going over agriculture and mining. But before we carry on, guys, remember you can win this Casio calculator. All you have to do is go onto our Facebook page, follow the link to th and put in the Curio code on your Curio app, and you could be walking away with this brand new Casio calculator. And remember, all the notes from today's show can also be found on our Facebook page. That's facebook.com forward slash learn extra. And as always, our geography show is sponsored by Macmillan. Let's carry on. Thank you very much, Lloyd. All right, so just to recap quickly, we've looked at the importance of agriculture to the economy, the factors favoring, the factors hindering agriculture in South Africa. We've also just started looking at mining as a primary activity in South Africa, and we've looked at the importance of it, as well as the factors that favor mining in South Africa. We just need to look at the factors that hinder or stop the progress of mining in South Africa, and then we'll look at some key questions that I've got from some exams for you. So let's carry on. All right, so factors that hinder mining in South Africa. First of all, the fluctuation in exchange rates is a big factor. Okay? The exchange rate, the rand, dollar value will obviously affect the prices of certain minerals. Also, underground water is quite dangerous. There's actually been reports of miners drowning when they drill into pockets of water. Labor costs, okay, there's often strikes around mines, they've risen steeply, so every year we're having to pay more in terms of wages. In addition to that, there's large-scale environmental damage, and one of the major culprits of that is open-cast mining. Now, open-cast mining is usually attributed to things like coal mining, and what they do is they literally dig from the surface and create massive holes in the ground over very wide expanses, which removes a lot of topsoil, a lot of natural vegetation, which is bad for the environment. Okay. Also, our mines are far inland, all right? So if we've got mines that are very, very far inland, it means we have to somehow transport all that material to the harbors, where we usually ship off um, produce to other countries. Now, when you're transporting minerals, we need to pay transport companies, we need to pay the transport costs, and that adds on to the price at which we export our, um, our produce or our minerals. And that means that we become less competitive with overseas markets who are selling their minerals at cheaper rates. Okay, so those transport costs really do have a large impact here. 
ruts, their transport costs, they raise the price of minerals, making them less competitive, so they're more expensive against their global competition. Last but not least, the incidence of HIV and AIDS is a big one as well, which obviously affects the workforce. We have to train new workforce. We have to try and provide medical subsidies to try and help these workers, and that's a big issue as well in our economy because we don't have the funds to, to provide um, salaries or, or medical assistance to all these miners, their families. We need to train all these new workers and we need to keep up the production on our mines, which is a big problem as well. We've looked at the factors and of agriculture and mining. It's time to revisit a couple of questions so that we can see if we can apply this knowledge. So let's have a look at those questions. Right, we're going to improve our skills with question one. Okay, we've got a newspaper article for you um, on food production, and if we just read through it very quickly, right, it says there melons are just bursting with chemicals. Okay, so watermelons have been bursting in eastern China after farmers gave them too much growth chemicals or growth hormones. South Africa has heavy trade links with China, therefore the abuse by farmers is of concern to us. Farmers in China are using illegal chemicals, with many also misusing pesticides and fertilizers. The reason for this is the demand for food, which is a problem being experienced in many countries. Fear has also been raised over the wide use of food additives like dyes and sweeteners to increase sales. The need to regulate the food industry there we go, is becoming increasingly important because of, th of threats of food insecurity, so not enough food, especially in southern Africa. So let's have a look at those questions. They're going to be based very similarly to what your notes were on previously. First question, what does food insecurity mean? And they always, always ask this question. So remember, food security meant that we have either enough food to meet the normal needs of our current population every day, or you can afford to buy enough food to live a healthy lifestyle. So it doesn't matter how much you phrase it, but as long as you've got the concept of enough food to remain healthy or enough food to meet your daily requirements, they should give you the marks. Okay, so food insecurity, therefore, the opposite of that. Okay, so they don't have enough food to meet their needs. So they don't have enough to meet their daily needs. And this could also happen because of exceeding population growth, which means that the demand is exceeding the food supply. Let's move on to the next question, 1.2. Describe the injustice that is captured in the article. Now, there's a few things going on there. They were speaking about illegal chemicals, illegal growth hormones that they're putting in these watermelons, okay? Now, that can have adverse effects on our health. And some of our consumers don't even know that they're consuming these things, all these extra chemicals and hormones. They're illegal chemicals as well. They don't fit our quality of standards, okay? In addition to that, when we add in chemicals to the environment, it also damages the environment. Things like eutrophication happen because extra nutrients get into the soil, into the water systems, into our drainage systems. So they are huge problems um, associated with adding too many extra things into our food. Additives, preservatives, they're all bad for our health as well. So let's just write down a few things that illustrate the fact that there's injustice. Okay, you're not meeting the needs of society. You're not being fair to the needs of society here. Right, so the injustice, okay, is that they're using illegal chemicals. All right. And people don't even know about this. So people are unaware. In addition, it's going to lead to health problems because you're consuming all these extra things that shouldn't go in your body. And lastly, there's also environmental damage. You only needed two things there. As long as you write them in a good sentence, you'll be able to get your marks. 
Question 1.3. In many parts of the world, genetically modified crops, so GM crops, are seen as a means of increasing food production. Okay? There's two questions here. Firstly, explain the concept of genetic modification. Right? So genetic referring to your DNA, modification meaning that you're changing the structure of that DNA. But it's worth four marks, so we need to add why perhaps we need to change the structure of DNA in plants. So there's a couple of reasons that they do this. Firstly, they want to make them more drought resistant because the rate of drought and desertification, in especially in Africa, is huge. So they need to make varieties of crops that can handle those drier conditions. In addition to that, sometimes they modify the DNA structure so that it improves the nutritional value or that it pr produces a higher yield of a crop. So we need you to say what uh, genetic modification is and say what it is for because it's worth four marks. Okay? All right, so we change the structure of the DNA in the plants. Okay. In addition to changing that DNA, we are making them drought resistant or resistant to diseases even. Okay. We are also doing it to increase the yield. And we're also trying to make it more nutritious in certain cases. All right. Second part of that question. You have to discuss two advantages of genetic modification. Now I mentioned one or two of those already. Okay, so we just need to discuss in a sentence. Don't just write phrases there. So firstly, we know that genetic modification makes seeds drought resistant. So for small-scale um, commercial or small-scale subsistence farmers, this is a good thing because then they, their crops will last longer because they can't afford to irrigate their crops. It also makes crops resistant to diseases and pests so that their crops also don't fail. So they're going to create a greater yield. And greater yields, if we're talking about commercial farms, mean greater exports, which means a greater contribution to our GDP. So I think we just needed two things there, so let's take those down. Okay, so firstly, it makes them drought resistant, so they can have a higher yield. So drought and pest resistant. Okay, creates higher yields. Okay, and therefore a greater export value. which obviously will contribute nicely to our GDP. All right, that's questions done and dusted. On to question 1.4. Now, this is your essay question, right? You're going to need eight marks here. It says, the increasing demand for food is a disturbing development. Give a detailed account, so you need to discuss everything properly, approximately 12 lines as to why many southern African countries are struggling to meet their food demand. So they're obviously saying that these places are not secure in terms of their food production. So let's just discuss this um, together quickly. So firstly, we know that we have a lot of areas in southern Africa which are very prone to droughts. I mean, just think about the Northern Cape. Think about the Namib Desert. They can't grow food there. So how are they supposed to provide for themselves and their families? In addition to that, the rainfall is so variable and so unpredictable that they can't always produce enough food. A lot of these farmers are very poor, so they can't afford things like fertilizers. Those things are expensive. They can't avo afford uh, hybrid varieties of seed. Okay? They can't afford uh, insecticides and pesticides. A lot of the time, governments are quite unscrupulous, so they don't get government aid as well. Just look at the legacy of apartheid. Our government wasn't fair to black farmers, and so they couldn't produce enough food. So there's quite a lot that we can be talking about here. So let's just jot a few things down. Just remember that you have to put this properly in a nice paragraph um, so that it's a proper essay question. Let's have a look at those notes. Right, so first of all, okay, let's write down that fertilizers and pesticides are expensive. can't really afford them. All right, in, ad in addition to that, 
drought has taken its toll, so they can't grow enough food. And while the, the fact, uh, as well as the fact of variable rainfall is a big problem as well. In addition to that, they tend to uh, exploit the soil, exploit the land, so over-exploitation of soil, of, of land. And we can add in there, we've already got more than enough, but the fact that we had corrupt governments which don't aid them enough is also a problem. There are many more reasons you could give. If they are logical and they make sense, you get your marks. All right, let's have a look at the next question. Question two, they give you a little diagram, right? And they show you all sorts of types of farming that are going on. So we're going to focus mainly on this region here. We're going to focus on this region here as well. Okay, notice, especially with region A, all right, where we have a tractor, we have a quite a large area of, of farm being made there, or farm being ploughed there. And we also have rather neat rows or neat arrangements of, of crops. So that's probably going to be our commercial uh, farm area. This area here, you can see there's huts there, or informally made sort of settlements, and they're probably growing <coughs> just enough to support their families. So at B, we probably have subsistence farmers. Let's have a quick look at those questions. All right, so firstly, you need to say whether or not commercial farming occurs at A or at B, okay? If we had a look at the diagram, no, no, we saw that at A, they had a tractor there, they had a big plot of land, they had neatly arranged rows of crops, okay? So that's firstly answer A for the first question. At B, we need to give just one reason, I'm going to give you more, but one reason for your answer, okay? So firstly, they have very large tracts of land. In addition to that, they have mechanization. They're using tractors. They also have neat rows of crops, which only really happens on a commercial farm. Just one of those gets you your two marks. Question C. Name two factors that favor agricultural development in South Africa. Now, we've already discussed these, so I'm just going to list them with you guys quickly. So firstly, we have a wide variety of crops because of a wide range in climate. So wide range in climate allows for crops, lots of different crops to be grown. We also have a, a rich history of climate research, which helps us to predict whether or not we're going to have a good or bad rainy season. We have extensive plant research as well. So that means that we've been able to develop hybrids that are, are drought resistant, for example. Much of South Africa is also flat, so we have large expanses of flat land or gently rolling hills, which does make a lot of farming a lot easier got more than enough, you only needed two things there. There are many more though. D, name two factors that restrict or stop agricultural development in South Africa. So these are the not so nice things that hamper our development here. All right, so again, you can say that we have too much drought, and I'm gonna specify that especially to the western parts of South Africa. especially areas like the Northern Cape, for example. Okay, you can say we have unreliable rainfall. You can also mention the overuse of soil as well. We've exploited it. So that means we can't get enough yield from it anymore. Let's have a look at question E. Of what importance, why is it necessary in other words, is agricultural development to the South African economy, okay? So we've mentioned a few things here before and we've discussed them at length already. So firstly, we have a lot of employment. And remember, that was both direct and indirect employment. People that work on the farms, people that work for food stores, uh, truck drivers, all those sorts of things. OK, 
okay? It's also important for our food security. We need to produce enough for the population. In addition to that, we've got high export value. And so that uh, contributes to our GDP. Here we go. Question done. All right. Question F. Let's go through this one quickly. Continuous mismanagement of this drainage basin could threaten food security. See, food security coming up time and again in South Africa. Explain this statement. So what does it mean? Okay. So if we don't look after our drainage basins, for example, we're not going to have enough water for irrigation. So that means we can't irrigate our crops properly, which means our crop yields will go down. Okay, if we don't have enough crop yields, we don't have a surplus, we can't export anything. We also can't feed our population. So that means that they're going to encounter famine. Then we're going to have to import a lot of food from other countries, which is also expensive. So just from not looking after our water resources, it has a lot of knock-on effects. So let's very quickly jot a few things down and then we'll go to a break. Okay? All right, so firstly, we don't have enough water for irrigation. Okay, which leads to a lower crop yield. Which means that we'll have to import food as well, which is expensive. And we're trying to do that to combat food security or food insecurity. Food insecurity. All right, and that's the last part of question two. I think it's time for a well-deserved break. Well, guys, I hope you guys have been working hard at those questions, jotting them down. Remember, all the notes you on the show today can be found on our Facebook page. That's facebook.com forward slash learn extra live. We'll be right back after the break. Don't go away. Welcome back, Matric Geography Mindsetters. Uh, as I told you before the break, you can win this Casio calculator. And today, we've got our winner for the geography show. That's George Sechale. And you can you walked away with this brand new cal Casio calculator. All you have to, and remember, guys, any one of you can win that calculator. All you have to do is to go onto our Facebook page and answer the challenge question. So, Michelle, carry on. Let's go. All right. So, we're going to have a look at that challenge question. So, let's see as you're answering it. Did you get the right idea? So, remember, let's just go through this question again and we'll discuss it a bit. All right. So, we need to refer to the homelands policy and how it prevented any black farmers from contributing to commercial farm production. Okay, so you need to know a little bit about apartheid history here. So remember that the homelands policy meant that black people, colored people, or anyone that wasn't white was pretty much confined to specialized areas where they didn't develop very well. Okay, so your homelands where all the black people were forced to go. Now, those areas of land were quite small and we had a lot of people living there. So they were forced to try and farm off the land to earn a living or to provide for themselves and their families. So they became subsistence farmers. Remember, they weren't allowed to be educated to a high level as well. So that means with a lack of education, they don't know how to farm effectively to replenish the soil, to get a maximum yield. So they overused the soil. They exploited the soil, which means that it became degraded over years and years of misuse. All right? So that meant that they can't produce any surplus. They only had just enough to feed their families. And all the white commercial farmers, they got all the big contracts. They had access to all the markets. They had the best tracts of land to actually work on. Hope you guys got a similar idea for that challenge question. Let's just jot down a few things just to remind you. All right, so the homelands policy basically forced them into subsistence farming. And remember on subsistence farms, they generally had very small pieces of land. So small sections of land. They overused the soil. They didn't have any surplus. So they can't sell as a commercial farm would. And all the white 
people owned the farms, the commercial farms. Well, the white farmers basically had all the contracts. All right, I hope you guys got that one right. There's one or two more questions that we can go through before we end for today. Question three, let's just have a look. There's one or two things on mining I really wanted to go through here. So very quickly, let's have a look at uh, one of the year's contributions in terms of economic sectors to the South African GDP. So we've got quite a lot of services, we've got quite a lot of manufacturing, and only a very small amount of primary activities in this section here. All these here are services and secondary uh, activities. So our economy is growing quite rapidly in terms of its services and its secondary activities, but we want to focus a little bit on the primary activities. So first question here, you need to define the term primary activity. Now there's, um, there's a a popular term that's going around now, it's called e extractive industries. I've seen that in a few papers. So if they talk about extractive industries, they are also talking about uh, farm, uh, farming or uh, any primary activities like mining or forestry, for example. So extractive industries is a nice word to use. Materials that are extracted from the Earth's surface. Okay, so let's write that down. So raw materials... They are extracted from the Earth's surface. And that could be anything from farming to fishing to forestry to mining. That'll get you your two marks right there. Question 3.2. We needed to list two primary activities from the figure. Okay, so let's have a look there once more. Right, we've got quite a few to choose from. There's agriculture, forestry, fishing. We've got mining and quarrying. Construction is a secondary activity, so I'm just going to cross that one out. So any of those other five you could choose from. So let's just list two of them. So mining, and let's choose forestry. Two very easy marks. Question 3.3, explain, so in a sentence, not just phrases, not just words, explain why mining provides such, should be a small percentage to South Africa's economy. Well, if you have a look at that graph, I've just explained to you that the growth in our tertiary sector and our prior, well, and our, sorry, in our uh, tertiary sector and our secondary sector has grown immensely. And remember, those things add more value to the economy. They get a higher um, export value. They get a higher GDP value. All right? So the growth of industry, growth of industry, as well as the tertiary sector, that will contribute more to the GDP contributes a greater value. To our GDP. Just make sure you explain that nicely in an exam. All right, question 3.4. Explain this statement. Although there are fewer workers involved in agriculture, the total output in agriculture has actually increased. So that seems like a little bit of a paradox, okay? Because you need more workers to produce more farm yields, right? Well, not necessarily. In commercial farms these days, because we have such large areas of farmland to try and, and, and plow and harvest, we actually need machines to do the work for us. So the increased use of mechanization, okay, so like 
harvesters, combine harvesters, tractors, has reduced the need for so many workers. And a lot of workers have suffered because of that and they have been retrenched or they don't have employment anymore because machines can do the work consistently, they can do the work for longer as well without getting tired. So the increased use of mechanization would be the answer that they are looking for. Let's write that down. Okay, so the increased use of mechanization it enables larger yields to be generated okay right question 3.5 we need to discuss two social two negative social and environmental impacts of mining. Okay, I was talking a lot about open cast mining earlier, for example. Now, mining is a huge issue, especially lately in the news. I know in Four Ways area, for example, there was a couple of my kids that did uh, projects on acid mine drainage, which means that the, the the leftover chemicals or the dust pollutes water reserves, it pollutes the soil, and so it really does degrade the environment to a large extent. In addition to that, Mine workers, they also have a risky job. If their equipment isn't maintained, they don't follow safety procedures, they can get injured, they can get hurt. We've said before that underground mine uh, water is quite dangerous, um, so people can op often uh, get caught in, in pockets of water or even drown in some cases that I've heard about as well. There's a couple of things that you could mention there. All right, so mining, quite a dangerous thing for both people and the environment. Let's just write a few things down to end off, okay? So first of all, we have environmental damage. Okay? Environmental damage could be as a result of things like acid mine drainage. All those chemicals, pollutants get into the water and really severely harm our drainage systems. Okay? Open cast mining is another one. Open cast mining means that we remove all our valuable topsoil, we remove natural vegetation. We remove our topsoil as well because there's no uh, vegetation to hold it in place. We mentioned earlier when we were going through the notes on factors that hinder agriculture, that underground water is dangerous. Underground water is dangerous. And also, miners can be endangered if they don't follow correct procedures. our safety procedures, that is, are not followed. All right, and you should be able to get more than enough there for your four marks. That concludes our questions today. Lloyd, do we have any questions from our viewers? We actually don't have many questions from our viewers. Um, yeah, they actually quite seem quite... Well, uh, that seems like we've actually had uh, quite a good show, hopefully, and hopefully you guys have understood a lot of concepts. Therefore, just what I want to emphasize to you guys, um, especially when it comes to going through past papers and studying for your exams, most of the sections from what we've done today, let me just go through those terms very briefly with you guys again. They like to focus a lot on agriculture, mining occasionally, all right? Agriculture, the big one is food security. Virtually every single paper I've seen, um, food security comes up. And they usually ask you what it means or what food insecurity means. And then they're usually going to put that in an essay question. So what factors in our country um, don't allow for food security or threaten the food security of people. And you're going to refer to things like drought and uh, subsistence farmers overusing the soil, lack of fertilizers, lack of pesticides, lack of genetically modified seeds to, uh, to withstand drought and all those sorts of things. So food security is a big one. 
I've seen in a couple of papers as well, the dual um, agricultural economy, they like to ask what that means. So just remember small scale as well as large scale farmers. So small scale farmers um, could be commercial or subsistence. And then our large scale farmers, they refer to commercial agriculture. And both of those together basically make up our dual agricultural economy. Your essay questions could come from the importance of, the, of agriculture to the economy. It could come from uh, factors that favor agriculture as well. Just as long as you know at least four of those things, you'll be fine, all right? You also need to know factors that hinder or prevent agriculture from effectively taking place in South Africa as well. So you need to be able to write a little bit like that uh, or about that in an essay. With mining, all right, know basically your factors that promote mining, know your factors that also hinder mining as well. Later on, when we get to our uh, industrial regions, you're going to have to know what um, regions or IDZs, our industrial development zones, uh, which of them mine uh, iron or platinum, coal, all those sorts of things, because it's going to tie quite a lot into your um, secondary activities and your tertiary activities that you're going to be doing later. Most popular, however, is going to be agriculture. Okay, so really study that really well for your prelims that are coming up, because those are coming up in a few weeks. So I really hope you guys are preparing thoroughly for those. And I wish you all the best of luck for those prelims if I don't see you on another show before then. Over to you, Lloyd. Cool. Thanks a lot, Michelle. Guys, remember all the stuff we went over today in, in the show uh, can be found on our Facebook page that's facebook.com forward slash learn extra and all the competitions as well as the water game link can be found on the page so guys until next time my name is Lloyd I'll see you guys next time